Um, what is your name, age, and your relationship to me? Um, <clears throat> my name is Louise Brooks Rasmussen, and I'm her grandmother. Are you or were you married, and did you have a family? Describe the family. Uh, yes, I, <clears throat> I was married um, in 1950, and uh, <clears throat> we had four children. Uh, the first were twin girls, and uh, then we had two boys. Mm -hmm. uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Red Bluff, California, in uh, September 14, 1928. Are you the first generation to be born in the U.S.? If not, do you know who was? I'm not the first generation. <clears throat> Um, I can only see to my mother's side, but numerous generations ago uh, was the immigrant from Scotland uh, in this 1749. James Browning. James Browning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if applicable, can you remember August 6th, 9th, 1945, when America dropped two atomic bombs on Japan? How do you think this? the U.S. change following this event? Hmm. That, <clears throat> that is memorable. Um, I was a high school kid, about your age at that time, um, and <clears throat> when the bomb was, I can't remember when the bomb was dropped, I, but it was within a day uh, that they declared victory. And that's what I remember because I was on a Greyhound bus um, coming from Phoenix, Arizona to Denver, Colorado with my Aunt Laura to visit my cousin who was in the Army in uh, Lowry Field, Denver. And <clears throat> we had sat up all night on the bus from Phoenix. And in the morning we were drowsy and we came in, as we came into the outskirts of Denver we heard cheering and noise. and. Uh, Somebody screamed, the war is over. And uh, we, when we came in to Denver, of course, everybody was cheering. And my cousin, who um, was a lawyer, and uh, had to go into the military and leave his law practice, was celebrating not only the end of the war, but the chance he... The fact that he could then return to civilian life and pick up his his uh, law practice. It was a lot of celebration. Oh. Um, and how about the Vietnam War? Do you think America had lost trust in the federal government by the end of the war? And if so, has this trust ever been won back? I really can't tell, speak too much about the war in Vietnam. You did protest. <clears throat> you did go on the yes. protest. Yes. Um, I was less, uh, I wasn't out in the protesting so much <clears throat> because I was home with the kids. Um, but your grandfather and your father and your uncle, is that the Vietnam War? There was a protest in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story I've heard from your grandfather was that we were, were shopping at a grocery store in Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley, and uh, the parade uh, people marching to protest the war came by, and they were going down to, the, to Oakland, to the induction center. And when your grandfather saw a colleague from the chemistry department go by, he grabbed your Uncle Dave and your dad and joined the march. And uh, I don't know what I did. I was probably left to take the groceries home. Um, how do you think the world's perception of the United States changed on July 20th, 1969, when we put the first men on the moon? Hard to say. <clears throat> I don't know that they... <clears throat> Percepts, I mean, the perception had been for quite a while that we were an industrial country of, um, of amazing things. Um, I'm sure, I'm only speculating. <clears throat> I think that it just confirmed in people that uh, we were a society with an advanced technology and 
capable of remarkable things. Um, how do you think the world looked at the U.S. following Nixon's resignation on August 8, 1974, in response to the Watergate scandal? Um, yeah, again, it's hard for me to generalize about, but uh, maybe they were, it's in retrospect, probably people saw that. Uh, I think we've always been, a, in my lifetime, a, a powerhouse amongst nations. But um, I guess Nixon's uh, fiat problems and his later resignation um, spoke to the fact we're only human and we have our problems. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, we're not, maybe not that much different from anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, in what way do you think our nation changed on November 9th, 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down, effectively ending the Cold War? Mm. <clears throat> Again, um, I guess for me, there was a sense of a kind of new beginnings, because the... Uh, for the symbolic value of the wall coming down. I think it was apparent to many people that <clears throat> we were entering a new era with, uh, with our, in our relations with Soviet Union. And uh, perhaps, um, I'd say a certain exhilaration, um, anticipation, and not knowing really what lay ahead. Um. What do you remember about 9-11 when the country experienced the terrorist attacks on the Pentagon and World Trade Center? How was America changed by this? And, uh, my reaction was horror. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, because uh, we had grown up with the, uh, the notion, which was not, which was real. We had never had war on our soil. Uh, for a long time, and uh, my generation grew up knowing that was just the way it was. We fought overseas, but we didn't have to fight on our home territory. So, again, a sense of we're entering a new world, and I don't know what it's going to bring, but it, uh, it shook us up. Mm -hmm. And what about the change in airport security after 9-11? as you would expect. That's my feeling. Um, <clears throat> not a big deal, particularly not in terms of con convenience, minor inconvenience for passengers. Um, just another sign of the times that uh, um, we were no longer invulnerable. Mm -hmm. Finally, it is said that every American citizen has a dream, be it wealth, happiness, a better life for their children, etc. What was your dream, and do you think you achieved it? Do you repeat it again, to have a better life than my parents? <clears throat> is um, that right? <coughs> well, uh, it says uh, everyone has an American dream, be it wealth, happiness, or a better life for their children. So Might on. as well be wealth, happiness, and hence a better life for our <laughs> children. Um, because remember, we were the generation born during the Depression mm -hmm. in 1928. <clears throat> 29 was the depths. January 29th was a real low point in the uh, Depression. Um, sure, we grew up with a feeling that... Uh, I, my own feeling was the depression was something that happened kind of during my childhood, but once it was over, we were back to quote-unquote normal, which was uh, an upward trajectory, always improving. Uh, yeah. Okay, and now for the last two questions, you get to interview me. So ask me questions one and then... Be sure to think the person um, Now these, for me, is this for you to answer? Yeah, this is for me to answer, so you can Okay, answer. all right. <clears throat> what event during your lifetime, am I talking to you, 
had the greatest impact on our nation? And was this a positive one, or how did it change the country in your short lifetime? Mm -hmm. um, I would hand. say, I would say September 11th, 2001, but I didn't remember it when it happened. Mm -hmm. So I think um, Obama, President Obama, getting elected because it showed that um, you don't always have to be like white to be president, and it opened new doors for other candidates, and maybe one day we'll have a woman president. Aha, uh -huh. good for you. Um, <clears throat> and I'll read from your uh, teacher's Scary list here. second one. And finally, after a year of studying the history of our country, what do you see as your place in our future? What are you hoping to accomplish as a U.S. citizen? And what is your American dream? So... <clears throat> Why don't you start with, what do you see as your place? Um, I like to just be a productive member of society and mm -hmm. somehow contribute to world peace. World peace, good. Mm -hmm. What might you do to, to contribute? What would you think offhand? Join the military? Um, um, AmeriCorps or Peace Corps? Mm -hmm. Peace um, Corps. Yeah. Um, and that's it, I think. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's just let go.